All right, a few last uh, thoughts over Dr. Faustus. As far as what Faustus receives for uh, the bargain, Faustus craves knowledge, knowledge of all things. And we find out that he's not really given that. Um, the Mephistopheles makes it seem like that that will be given to him, but it's really not. And, and specifically, anything related with God is off limits. There's a few places where even if Mephistopheles, excuse me, if Faustus even mentions the name God, Mephistopheles is kind of like, ah, la, la, I'm not listening, we're not talking about God, don't talk about God. Lucifer shows up and scares the crap out of uh, Faustus, as I'm sure it would anyone. Um, but Lucifer shows up and he's like, hey, Faustus, you're hurting my feelings here. We made a deal and, and all you're talking about now is God. Think not of God, think only of hell. Think only of Lucifer. Um, so there is a condition to the amount of knowledge that um, Faustus can, can learn about. It's, uh, he can learn about things of the world. He can learn about things. Basically, he can learn about anything that's not heaven. Um, but it seems like if it's related to God or um, to heaven, that's off limits. So he doesn't have omnipotence. He's not given omnipotence. Uh, knowledge of all, which it seems like that's kind of what he was desiring. He's given a bum deal. Uh, there's another part here where it's, and it's this is kind of subtle, but I, I think it, it goes with uh, um, the condition of knowledge. Faustus, one of the first thing he asks for is a wife. And Mephistopheles basically summons a, a demon bride. And of course, uh, Faustus is like, oh, get that, uh, I think he calls it a hot whore. So I'm going to get her away, it away. Um, this is kind of a joke on Mephistopheles' part because Mephist Mephistopheles says, you know, don't marry. Why do you want to get married? I'll bring you a new woman every day and don't worry about marriage. I think this is actually uh, because Mephistopheles wouldn't be able to provide a bride for Faustus because, you know, marriage is a, a covenant with God. It's a pact with, uh, that God's a part of. So I think this is a way Mephistopheles is able to get around it by saying, ah, oh, you know, who wants a wife? You want, uh, we know what you want. You don't want the commitment. You want the other stuff. And I can give you the other stuff new every day. And we find out that, you know, Faustus is like, oh, okay, yeah, let's do that instead. Um, as far as the knowledge and the power that Faustus gets, when you think about it at the play's in, and you think back about what has Faustus done with this power and knowledge that he's received, he doesn't really do that much. He kind of squanders it. Um, we see him a few places play pranks on people, and that's kind of like, I mean, if you've got demigod-like power as uh, Faustus seems to have, and you're using it to play pranks on people, really, are you really applying yourself? Not really. Um, it, it seems just kind of humanistic, I think, that you show someone who gets such vast power, what do they use it for? Uh, not like Spider-Man going and fighting the good fight and, and helping the world. No, you, uh, he uses it selfishly, very selfishly. Uh, there was a movie, it wasn't really that good, but it illustrates the point. Um, the uh, Jim Carrey movie, um, uh, Bruce Almighty, I guess? One of the Almighty's. There's a couple, couple of Yeah, Bruce Almighty. Um, but anyway, it kind of shows the same thing. If you give someone uh, these powers, doesn't necessarily mean they're going to use them the right way. And I don't think Faustus does. Um, he accomplishes very little. Um, what he accomplishes seems completely selfish. There's a few places, though, that he seems to uh, take favors. He does favors, but he only does favors for people of, of power, people of, of position, emperors and things like this. So it's kind of this, you know, um, sure, I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine. Um, the hope of salvation for uh, Faustus is really, it's present throughout the play. There's the good angel and the bad angel, which, you know, you think about showing up on the shoulders, you got the little good angel and the bad angel. Um, we've got these in the play. They show up throughout the play, uh, and the good angel is always saying, you know, repent, 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 it's not too late, God will have mercy on you. 
But uh, Faustus ignores this because he's governed by fear. He's governed that um, the demons will tear him apart, will tear into his flesh if he vouches or if he uh, welches on the deal and he uh, tries to find mercy with God. Um, so it's fear that keeps Faustus trapped in uh, the pact, fear of what the demons will do. And the good angel communicates that the demons would have no power to harm Faustus, not one hair of his head, if Faustus truly repented, that he would be protected by God. Um, it's, it kind of goes back to the pride, the hubris, that Faustus shows, because even at the end of the play, when he's discussing his situation with his the scholars and his time's running out, the scholars say, "Repent, you know, get out of the deal by you know sh sh showing repentance and, and and calling on God to help." And Faustus seems to show more hubris by separating himself from all other humanity. He says that even the original sinners, uh, Adam and Eve, even they are subject to grace, but he is not. Um, this isn't really something that... It's, it's not because uh, Faustus looks down on himself. It goes back to Faustus does not view himself as equal to anyone else. That, that here, his pride, uh, his inflated sense of ego, keeps him from realizing the gift that he can... You know, it's this... Uh, the monopoly, get out of jail free. Get out of hell free. Um, and... and the good angels basically waving it in his face. Here his friends are trying to tell him, look, you know, take advantage of it and, and go to God. But Faustus um, doesn't really see this as an option for him. It's an option for anyone but him. But he's different, even though he's not. Um, he thinks he's different. Um, to go back to the end of the play, though, you know, we have these comic interludes, but then at the end of the play, um, there's a very clear cut. The, the, the clock tolls midnight, and time is out, and Faustus is dragged to hell. Um, it's interesting, if you look at the biographical information on Marlowe, really interesting stuff. I mean, it's uh, check it out. Um, but uh, one of the things he was accused of in his life was um, atheism. Um, I, I don't really... The content of the play seems to promote a, a pretty heavily Christian message, so either um, he was falsely accused or he's just uh, got a really creative uh, and uh, good sympathetic mind. But um, I think that Faustus is... Um, it, it revisits a lot of the ideas we've already seen in some of our other literature, and we'll look at some literature in the future uh, and the time we have left, that'll echo some of the ideas that we have uh, here in the play. So I hope you enjoy it.